go. All right, all right, all right. Well, if you're going to find a seat and, and uh, get ready, i tell you what, we had a good meal. If you did, if you did miss it, um, we didn't have a lot of advertisement on that. The people from the cafe wanted to be gone, and so we threw that out there last week and among the, the vision meeting, and, and we talked about several things. So uh, as you're getting, everybody's getting seated. Hey, hey, Harvey, Harvey, you're done, buddy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Got to wrangle in the kids, you know. I mean, it's just. <laughs> but uh, anyway, well, listen. <clears throat> let me ask you a question. Are you expecting? Amen. Well, that's good. Hey, listen. Uh, one thing before we get started that we talked about last week is the uh, we're going to get started on the arena. We've uh, we've got, the, and if you want to see kind of where we're going to do it, it's just a. Uh, grass and weeds right now but just to the south end of, of this parking lot and just to the south of the, of the fence there's barbed wire on both sides there's a long strip there that we're going to be able to put it on it's up on top not down there in the bottom where it floods and uh, but i tell you what we need and i don't know dennis if you've got a i need is anybody close that's got a disc and a tractor and a disc the big one pretty good sized one that we can really cut down did you have any any luck larry finding a Okay, well, I don't want to road mine 20 miles, and uh, so uh, it's got an air conditioner, but it only runs 18 miles an hour, and that's a long trip, so I don't really want to do that, but if you've got, a, uh, got one, in, and because the ground is pretty hard, uh, we want to get it worked before it gets any harder, and so if anybody has got a uh, close right here, I'm going to be working on it, but if you know of anybody, I just thought I'd throw that out there, so all right, well, let's open with a word of prayer. Uh, I'll pray. Father, we just come before you tonight, and Lord, we thank you for, for all that you've done for us and all you're doing and all you're going to do. And Lord God, we thank you, and, and, and we, we anticipate growth and, and increase as we develop the arena, as we begin to, to plan for our, our upcoming events and things that we're going to begin to do. And Lord, we just ask that you just continue to draw in people from the north, south, and east, and west. And Lord, they could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ that they could receive the correction and the instruction and the equipping of the Word of God and become disciples of Christ. And, and Father, we just praise you. We thank you that we can present the, the, a, a life in God that, that's appealing to, to mankind, that their hearts be, be softened to receive you. And Lord, we just, we just begin to continue to cultivate that, that relationship and uh, that vision. So Lord, we ask your anointing upon the church and in all that we do and upon this evening as we worship you in song and, and with word, we just praise you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, there's a lot going on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we've begun to talk about a, a big trail ride in the fall with a, a fishing tournament along with that. I got a place that we can do that. Uh, I believe that's all going to come together so that if you want to fish or you want to ride or you want to just come hang out, there'll be a place to do that as it begins to cool off. I don't think anybody's really looking to do that right now as hot as it is but <clears throat> we are we are making a lot of plans and so uh we we've talked to jim uh, about being able to to come and and maybe play at some of those things he's he's excited about that along with some of the others but jim garland comes to us from over by stillwater at perkins right guthrie, guthrie. oh you're at guthrie <clears throat> the church is close to yeah, perkins in Perkins, okay, and uh, where he helps in, in there. And so let's give Jim Garling a hand and let him come minister to us in song. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, just real quick, I'm 20 minutes. Is that, where am I at? 7 or what? I need you in the pulpit preaching, right? No, I don't have a set time. Just do three or four songs. Okay. You're the one. You're out of here. Yeah, if when you've had enough, no. I want to hear you just go. No, now, here we go. He likes you too well. I, don't know. <laughs> I am so glad to be here tonight. I'm going to tell you. How many of you had a good day today? I mean, a good day. Okay. How, gra uh, fantastic. How many of you had kind of a so so day? Yeah, okay. How many of you just, just, just was not your day? Yeah, well, perfect. For me, it's not been one of my best days, just to tell you the truth. I, uh, I had uh, lots of things on my mind. I have a, 
a good friend who had surgery yesterday on her neck. She has been in tremendous pain. She came out of that surgery and she's still in tremendous pain and she was still in tremendous pain. And I think, Lord, what in the world? And on the way over here, I'm thinking about her. And then I got another friend in the church and they got married about two years ago and right away she had a little baby and then I saw him Sunday and she got cancer and passed away. Man, he's been fighting it hard. The kid's about a year and a half old. My mind is just involved with that and all kinds of things in the world. And why do I tell you that? Because I'm not going to let that get me down right here. I mean, I'm driving over here an hour and a half, and I'm, all of that stuff is going in my mind, and I'm thinking, poor old Paula, poor Chris. God, what can we do to help Chris? What's going on? And I got to this front door, and I said, Lord, we're going to worship you, and we are going to do it positively, and we're going to leave the world outside. And so we're going to start off just singing some old hymns. For those of you that know part of those old hymns, help me sing them. If you just know the taglines, sing them. That'll help us leave here even happier in the Lord, for sure. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Here we go. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in the pilgrim's way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Here we go. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. I like this verse right here. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. One more time. Safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yeah, good job. Really good job. song, uh, this old hymn kind of lends, lends itself to that same idea. We're leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord. And, uh, you know, when we get times that we're down, or times when it's really good, we need to realize that those arms of the Lord are the ones that are holding it up. Where could I go but to the Lord? How many of you heard that old hymn? Okay, good. Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? That's not my wife. That's not my neighbor. It's not my best friend. Who is it? Thank you very much. Living below in this 
old sinful world Hardly a comfort can afford Striving alone to face temptation's call Where could I go but to the Lord Help me if you know it, here we go Where could I go my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord, life here is grand with friends I love so well. Comfort I get from God's own word But when my soul needs manna from above Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Where could I go? my soul needing a friend to help me in the end where could I go but to the Lord yeah my neighbor's a really great guy but he can't help me with these kind of things he just can't do it it's up to me where could I go where could I go Seeking a refuge for my soul Needing a friend to help me in the end Where could I go but to the Lord? That's a hard thing to remember. Where could I go but to the Lord? One more time. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 I'm going to stop right there. You think I'm preaching tonight or something? I don't know. When he says he's got the whole world in his hands, that's you. And 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 me. It's pretty amazing. He could have us all. So when we sing this, He's got the whole world in his hands. I want you to be thinking, praise the Lord. Jesus has got me in his hands. Here we go. One more time. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got my brothers and my sisters. In his hands, he's got my brothers and my sisters. In his hands, he's got my brothers and my sisters. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands.
Sometimes that's kind of hard. Yeah, thank you. Y'all did a great job. Well, let's do one more. Then we're going to hear a good word. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Love. I've got love like a river. I've got love like a river I've got love like a river in my soul and I've got love like a river I've got love like a river I've got love like a river in my soul how about some joy I've got joy like a river, and I've got joy like a river, and I've got joy like a river in my soul, and I've got joy like a river, I've got joy like a river, I've got joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river in my soul. Good job. Good job. And you know, one of the things that I know about that is that's a choice a lot of times. And you know, I think the example of, of what he's dealing with tonight is that, that choice that we make or that decision that we make to say, you know what, here's how I'm going to do it. I've told you the story about me sometimes. There's once in a while I'll get myself in the mirror, look in me and, you know, say, listen, you, you're not going to act like that. You're not going to have that attitude. You're not going to get down. You're not going to be run over. You're not going to be defeated. You're going to walk in the joy of the Lord. And you're going to, this, this is just kind of the way we're going to do. And so whenever we get to having a bad day, we can end that bad day by turning things around and, and worshiping the Lord. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, that kind of lines up with where I was going to teach tonight. But uh, uh, tonight, uh, before I get into my message, I want to make a few announcements. Uh, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, we'll have the, another men's meeting. We'll have one more week to announce that. But you can take that date down. We didn't write, we didn't uh, do any bulletins because that was all we really had in the announcements. But, you know, uh, I was blessed last week to get to say thank you to all those that serve. And some of you might not have been here, those that serve. And, Harvey, I was teasing you, but, uh, but you, we were thanking those that had served. He was one that I mentioned that wasn't here. But uh, there's a lot of things that go on before and after a service to get things uh, put, picked up and put out. And so we do have to take everything down tonight so, because I'll have a sale tomorrow or uh, Thursday, I should say. And so uh, we'll want to be sure and, and uh, those that want to help to do that, you've got ways to serve. There is a sign-up sheet uh, that kind of shows some of the areas. I know a lot of you are already serving in those areas. And uh, so you don't feel like you've got to write your name down on, the, on a list you're already on. But if you'd like to see some of the places that, uh, that you could help out serve and be connected. There's a little bit of information there, and you can always ask, and, and uh, we'll help try to put you to work any way we can. So anyway, that's a blessing. We always want to say thank you to uh, Enid Livestock Market, Dakota and Clarissa Davis. Uh, just a blessing. Let us use this facility, so let's give them a hand. <clears throat> Some young guy run down here at the bottom of the stairs and flip that light switch. These, I just noticed these lights aren't on. That's why it's not as bright in here. Paul, you can do that. Paul, run down there. You're young enough. You ain't young, but you ain't as old as some. If you would, sir, flip that light down there at the bottom of that. Uh, I think that'll help us out. I just realized that 
Uh, all the light switches are on. It's kind of cr crazy. There you go. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of crazy uh, how many switches and lights and how the combination of everything around here is kind of kind of interesting. Also want to let you know there's uh, buckets at the entrances that you can see there. That's your opportunity to give. And when you give, I want you to give in faith, expecting right now in this season that we're in, it is a time that most everybody is feeling stressed. I uh, had an opportunity. We, we bought a little uh, car and uh, found a good deal on an on a older used car. And uh, I'm going to be driving that car. They were teasing me a little bit uh, today. But, I, hey, it's got a great big trunk. I can throw multiple feed, feed sacks in there, some minerals, some salt blocks, and I can go check cows in that dude and get 25 miles to the gallon. Now, that's some good stuff. But you know, in, in these stressful times or the times that we're, when it's stressful filling your vehicle up, you know, the last thing we want to do is begin to get focused on everything we used to have or don't have and get negative. We need to put our faith and our trust in God. So continue to sow seed, continue to tithe, continue to trust God. That's our demonstration. But man, do it in faith saying, God, you are my source. And as I give, I'm setting, I'm aligning my faith with the church and with those that are believing for your supply, that he'll make a way where there is no way. I can guarantee you, you'll look up and you'll go, wow. The little car, the, the car that we found, I'll just tell a little bit of the story. Uh, a, a person, it popped up on Facebook. I hadn't even really decided that we were going to do that, but I'd been thinking and praying about it. And we got that car. It was already about 3000 under Blue Book, what they priced it at, and the guy knocked another 1000 off when I called him. I didn't ask. He just did. Now, see, that's the kind of thing that God can do. You say, well, I need more money. Well, sometimes you just need a better deal on something or, or some other way, and that's how God can work. And so trusting God in these times, in these difficult times, you know, I want you to believe God as you give, that God's going to make a way where there is no way. So let's, let's pray and let's offer this up to the Lord. Father, we just come before you, and we thank you, Lord, that we can entrust our lives to you. And, Part of our life is our finances. Lord, we work hard or maybe you've saved hard and, and you're depending on uh, retirement or whatever your income is. But Father God, I thank you that we're not working and trust in trusting our life to that paycheck or that source. We're trusting it to you. And when we do that by faith, we're tapped into a heavenly economy. Your word says that you'll meet our need, Philippians 4.19, according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You'll supply all our needs. So, Father, I know that sometimes it, it gets difficult. Sometimes it looks uh, bleak or looks dark in, in, for some. But Father God, we're going to do it. We're going to entrust it to you. And we're going to know that you're going to make a way. You're going to supply. Now, Father God, we just praise you. We thank you that we're going we're to wake up every morning with an expectation to see the miracles of God at work financially for those that are struggling or in, in, in every other area of life tonight. And Father God, for those that are represented here that give on a regular basis, we know, we know that you would do it in faith. And so we trust with you the supply of God, the provision of God. And that Father, we thank you that you are, are, are our hope and our source. We give you honor and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, tonight I want to share with you from the Word of God. Go to John chapter 1. And uh, I'm calling this Let Truth Rule. I've been teaching my morning Bible study. If you watch on uh, the Facebook, the High Call Ministry Facebook, a lot of you do. And, and I've been talking about some scriptures that I'll use tonight, but that's kind of been my, my theme this last for the first two days, which was mo Monday morning and Tuesday morning, um, was, was talking about the truth, uh, the truth of God's Word and, and referring to it in that manner. John, uh, I'm not going to turn there, but John 17, 17 says that your word is truth. He's talking about, and, and so we associate when, we, when we're talking about, or when I'm talking about the truth, I'm talking about really the Word of God. And, and we got to make sure that the truth of God rules our life. And that's the challenge right now when we look at a lot of, of, a lot of your circumstances, your situations. You, you, you look at, at the ability to fill up your car or, 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 or buy groceries or things that are, that are more, uh, more costly than they used to be. I, I went in and, and uh, bought a pair of jumper, ca jumper cables to sicken this you know, extra vehicle we now have. And I thought, 
they weren't marked very good. I was in Napa, and they weren't marked very good. And I, I thought I was kind of buying the middle of the road. You know, I didn't want to buy the real cheapos that won't start a car, but I didn't want to. I, I could tell the other one, the, the really good ones were going to be more expensive than what I was wanting to spend. And I got up there, and I also grabbed a, a little set of pliers, a little six-in-one, these cool little pliers. They do all kinds of things. And, and they didn't have them marked any, either. And I thought, oh, well, those will only be seven or eight bucks. That'll be fine. And I got up there, and, and, and I set that stuff on the counter, and he rang it up, and I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went, how much are these jumper cables? And he said what they were, and I went, okay, I've only got two other items, and I know one of them was only $10. I said, well, how much are these pliers? He said, $23. And I went, uh, I don't think I need those. I think I'll just buy me. I, I said, I'm pretty sure I got some old extra spare CTs laying around. You know, I can throw in the door panel of that car and have me a set of pliers in case I get out there on the dirt road checking cattle and need to fix a fence or something. You know, I, I don't need a $21 or $23 set of pliers in my, it, to ride around in my car that I probably use once a year. Well, you know, things have gotten more expensive. But the truth of God's Word, if we settle it and we make it our foundation, we'll say instead of looking out. Now, using wisdom, it's all right to change some things. I'm going to let old brown truck set a lot. It's got a lot of miles on it anyway. It's good for it to set and not rack up miles. But it gets eight miles to the gallon. So that every time I don't drive it, I'm making money almost, you know. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm going I'm to drive that up. There's some smart things we can do, but I'm not going to run in fear and begin to lock in and say, I can't, I can't, I can't, when I'm tapped into a God who has more than enough, owns the cattle on a thousand hills, has, has a supply and a way. So we just got to trust God. Now I can tell you that, that uh, John chapter 1 and uh, verse 1, we're going to just begin in the beginning. He says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, in, he was in the beginning with God, and all things that were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now who are they talking about right there? Jesus. Referring to Him as the Word of God. It says in verse 5, it says, And light, the light sh shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now, I, I, wanna, I want us to, to look at the reflection, or, or I say the reflection, the, the illustration here of what he's talking about. He says there's a difference between light and dark. That's, that's pretty good. I didn't plan that. But you saw the difference when we got the extra light here. But you know, something that, that we see in, in this illustration is that darkness is driven out by the inhabitants of light. When light shows up, darkness leaves. What did we, what did we have? We had, uh, there's 40, uh, we, we replaced all these, I think there was 42 lights, I believe it was, Gary, wasn't it? Like 42 lights in this, in this place, or maybe 40 even, and there was about eight of them not on. And when we flipped the switch and, and we, we increased them, it's amazing. There's still one or two. I know that these, these we got to figure out there's a few that aren't on still, and we don't like that. We got to fix that. We got to figure that out. We, Gary, we got to figure that out. <laughs> I got to get the lift, and then I got to make sure the old man stays in the bucket and doesn't fall out. But, uh, but we, we got we to gotta fix that. But listen. We could shut all these lights off in here, and darkness could reign. But the moment the light comes, darkness doesn't say, hey, I'm not going. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay here. No, darkness leaves. And I think Jim's illustration of what he was dealing with, what's it, what was he dealing with? Darkness and heaviness. Weight and concern for, for loved ones and people that he cares for. I, I feel that all the time. I mean, there's so many times we're, we're the prayer list and, and I hear about all the things and there's all these things that can weigh us down and we have to choose to stand in the light of his word and allow it to shed light in those dark areas so that the darkness doesn't consume us. That's what Jesus came for. He came to give us freedom. He came to give us life. He, give us, he came to give us the, the, be the light to us. But this word is interesting. It says the, in verse 5 again, it says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. 
Now, that's an interesting way to translate this, this word or this um, this uh, that word here in this because when you, when you look at the Strong's Concordance and this Bible's got the the definition the lexicon and the and the Strong's definition here and it says there's three different ways that that Greek word you understand we're translating from Greek into English and so there's three different ways that it could be it could be translated it could be number one to seize so it could not seize it a second way that it could have been translated is to perceive it could not perceive it. And a third way to would be to quench it. Now you think about light or darkness cannot quench light. Light quenches darkness. It's snuffed out. It's driven out. It's, it's gone. And, there, and it's powerless against it. Light overcomes always. That's why God was related to as, as light. Well, you know, when I, when I begin to, to, to look at, at this definition in here, it says, you know, uh, that darkness will never be able to eliminate light. Light and darkness are essentially a, uh, antagonistic, but the Christian's joy is in knowing that light is not only greater than darkness, but it'll also outlast it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're tapped into the light. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that seem dark. There's a lot, of, a lot of things that, that could be weighty, that could be heavy. There, if, we begin, if we continually focus on those things, we'll be consumed with darkness. You ever, you ever you know, be, have a season or a time in your life where, and I, I have, where, where I was overwhelmed, like a blanket of, of darkness, of, of not really deprived. I've never really struggled with depression, but I know those that have, that, that have an, 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 like, a, like a cloak. But I, but I have felt or sensed that weight and that he heaviness and that, and that un in, un inability to get out of the place seemingly that I am. One of the reasons that, you know, on Carrier the last five weeks, I've, I've taught on prayer. And, and, I'm, and, I, and I think this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach on how to bring that into our daily prayer, just illustrating what we've kind of taught over the last five weeks. But that is the prayer and praise is one of those ways that we can cause light to enter those dark times. You know, I, I, can, I can tell by the crowd a lot of times some of you and I could pick some of you out but I won't do that but some of you are not demonstrative some of you are not you know you're not really interested in clapping your hands you're not really interested in singing along you're not really interested in you know you'll tap your toe a little bit maybe or something if it gets really peppy but you, you're not real demonstrative and and you're re pretty reserved but you know, there's some things about that when you, you ought to maybe, maybe think about finding a time when you can get alone so it's just you and God and shake off every inhibition and go ahead and maybe lift your hands or, or stomp your feet or just walk around a little bit and make some declarations. You know, I'm pretty demonstrative, so it's pretty easy for me to do that because I'll do it in, in front of people sometimes even. But whenever I get heavy and I get weighted down or things get, get pretty dark, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get up early in the morning or I'll stay up late at night when nobody else is around. You know, not that Sue's going to be surprised after all these years that I'd be, you know, pacing, you know, stomping or, or getting, getting uh, after the devil shaking off the darkness, but begin to praise. You know, one of the things that I taught last Sunday was different kinds of prayer. And it took us through about seven different kinds of prayer. And one kind of prayer was thanksgiving. The prayer of thanksgiving. Declaring thanksgiving to God, thanking Him for what He's done. If you want to shake off some of your heaviness sometimes about what, what you don't have, you begin to thank Him for what you do. You begin to praise Him and thank Him for, yeah, I may not be able to, you know, what's the old country song is, I'm, I'm not, as, not as good, I'm good once as I, I don't know the song, but anyway. <laughs> huh? I'm good once as I ever was. Yeah, you may not be able to hang with them like you used to, but you can, you can, get, you can get out there and do a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe you can't, you know, do what you once could, but you can, maybe you can still do whatever. Find something good. Begin to thank God for it. You know, I didn't get, I'm using that car deal. I didn't use that car deal as a, boy, ain't I smart, or aren't I lucky, or isn't that a coincidence? 
I got down there. I knew that man well enough. I didn't even drive it. I told him I'd take it. We got down there. I wrote him a check. I put a kid that I took down there to help me drive it back, and he drove it back. I trusted him. I trusted it was God deal. And I trusted that I bought it cheap enough. If I did have to fix something, it was worth it, all right? But also, it was, it was a type of deal. Now, I didn't say, well, I'm not smart. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in the right place at the right time. Thank you, Lord, for providing the ability to take care of that situation, to change a, 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 a big expense out of our monthly budget. Thank you, Lord, for transforming some, some, the situation. Begin to thank Him for it. You know, it's good to have a list of things that you can thank God for. Oh, thank you, Lord, that I'm awake today. Thank you, Lord, that I'm, I'm able to move. Thank you, Lord, or whatever it be, and begin to thank Him. The other thing is begin to praise Him. And begin to praise Him is sometimes more out in front of you. Sometimes the praise is more about what He's going to do. You notice one of the things I say all the time, God, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what you're going to do. That's an expectation. The truth of God's Word gives us that ability to do it. And when we trust and trust it to God, we can, we can trust Him for that. You know, I heard a guy say one time he was in, a, he was in this long-term battle for sickness or, or with, 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 a, with needing healing and over a certain situation. And he couldn't figure out why he wasn't getting victory, why he wasn't getting victory. And I, I, I've, I've experienced this at different times with different things in my life. But he said what the Lord sp spoke to him was begin to praise me for it. Begin to praise me for it because faith says, God, I trust you enough that if it's your word and it's truth to me and it's truth to you, then I'm going to go ahead and praise you for it in advance. See, that's like taking that Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's one condition on that is that I'm going to believe it and I'm going to receive it and I'm going to praise him for it. And I'm going to begin to set that as my expectation. God, I thank you and I praise you. Ooh, for all that food that I'm now having to <clears throat> not burp. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But I'm going to thank you and praise you that you supplied my need for food tonight. But, but thank you, Lord, that you're going to provide my need. You're going to supply. What, what about, you know, our emotions? What about some of these other things? Begin to praise God for what he's done. That, Lord, I thank you and I praise you for it. And you know what? Uh, sometimes that victory comes as a result of, of shaking that off by, by stepping out, by doing that. You know, it's difficult, difficult, difficult when, when we pray and things don't instantly change or we pray and things don't change over time or we ask God and things don't seem to begin to change. It's difficult, but we can entrust those things to God and continue to hold fast to the truth. You see, it said darkness did not comprehend it, verse 5. It said they, they, didn't, they didn't seize it. They, they didn't perceive it. Or they didn't, uh, qu it, it, they didn't quench it. But you know, it goes on here in verse 10. It says, He was in the world, talking about Jesus, and the world was made through Him, and the world did not know Him. Now we begin to get into a different word, know. But it's real similar. But it said, The world did not know Him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. So they didn't know him, and they didn't receive him. But you know what? Over here in John chapter 8, you can hold your place over there, and, and we're going to go over here, and I'm about to, I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to show you this. Because in, in uh, John chapter 8, I shared this scripture the last two mornings in my morning Bible study. It says in verse 31, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed... Now notice he was referring to the darkness, those that rejected, those who would not receive over in John chapter 1. But here in John chapter 8 verse 31 he says those who, Jews who had believed. It, did, it wasn't conditional there was Jews. I think we can relate to the fact that we believe. He says, he said to them, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, something I told him on my morning Bible study, I said something I've added to that is the truth that you know will make you free. I'm not adding to Scripture, but I'm completing an understanding or a thought to, to know that it's when we know it 
And when we understand this word, let me show you what that word def is defined as in the Greek. It means to perceive, to understand, to recognize, to gain knowledge, to realize, to come to know. You see, all those words that help describe what it means to know Him and to know the truth. He says, when you know the truth, that truth you know, it's going to make you free. You think about areas where you have confidence in the Word. You think about areas that you are free in and, and, and walk in the fullness of. It's the areas that you've learned to study the Word and you've researched God and you're confident in. You know that you're saved. It's, it's when you're confident in that that truth has set you free. What other things do we need to know the truth in and, and get to know Him? You know, as I... As I was, was looking at this this afternoon, I, I thought about <clears throat> the truth that we know and, and, and what truth is it that you need to know concerning any given situation in your life. You know, a lot of times the world's trying to tell us one thing. Our experience is trying to tell us one thing. And sometimes God's trying to tell us something entirely different or that is different. And we got to hold fast to what God is, God's given us. You know, it goes on. I, I want to go back. Hold You can... You can hold your place, or, or we may not go back there to, to chapter 8, but go back to chapter 1. And I want to wrap this up with these couple of verses. He says in verse 12, But as many of, as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name, who, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You know, when I began to look at the, the, those verses 12, uh, it says, as many as received Him, to then He gave the right to become children of God and to those who believed in His name. You know, one of the things that the world sometimes can't understand is this idea of Jesus. I was at a, a funeral of one of our uh, men that goes to the Bible study, uh, Blackie Blackburn, uh, his wife passed away and, and, uh, we went to his funeral this afternoon and, and, uh, he, uh, the preacher, the pastor that did the service did an awesome job. And, uh, but he made it, made it very, very clear what it took to be saved. Made it very clear how to, how to get to heaven, how to, how to know and have that confidence. He made it very, very clear. And it says right here how to do that. But as many as receive him, to him he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Now verse 13, who, who were born not of blood, nor, nor of the, the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Wasn't anything they could do to achieve it. And verse 14 says, And the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And where I wanted to get to tonight, and and we're going to probably share it next week. But notice what Jesus was called. It said he was full of, bottom of verse 14, he was full of grace and truth. You know, when we begin to tap into the truth of God's Word, we're really tapping into who Jesus is. We begin to understand Him more and more. We begin to grow in, in who He is and, and what He's provided. We begin to, to not only just know Him, but we, we, we perceive Him, we understand Him, we recognize, we gain knowledge, we realize, we come to know. Well, you know, there's, there's something about that knowing Him and knowing the truth and knowing the grace that He provides and being able to walk in all those promises it's a process. You know, I, I titled this Let Truth Rule. We didn't get to my notes, all of them, but, you know, there's areas of our life that we need to allow the truth to rule in, in our, in our spirit, in our soul, and in our body, in all three of those different places. But part of that process is, is this. There's an inception, a, a beginning point. There's a, there's a point where we are reading the truth, we're hearing about Jesus, we're reading the Scripture, and we begin a process of knowing. And then there's the progress that, that happens through that process. We begin to gain a little better understanding. 
How many of you have, have got saved and knew everything there was about God? No. H- how many of you have grown a whole lot? You don't have to show your hands. You can if you want to. But how many of you have grown a whole lot in a short amount of time, maybe in the last year or, or last two years, or maybe during COVID you got locked in? Maybe you've grown. Hey, there we got one. That's good. He, he's grown a lot in his knowledge and in your knowledge and in your, in your understanding of, of God. It takes time. It takes a process. And then there's that time of the attainment when we know, and it's like we get to a point where we, we know that. Not in an arrogant way, but it's like you can't talk me out of that. If, if we had people from other religions come in here and start to, start to talk, and, and, and I gave them the pulpit, which ain't going to happen, but if we gave them the pulpit, we might have a discussion with me up here, but, uh, that, but if we gave them, and, and, and they were trying to convince you otherwise, could they talk you out of your faith? Could they talk you out of it? It's, you know, it's like if, if you're swimming, I always use that example, if you're swimming in a pool, and somebody walks up to you and says there's no water in that pool, what are you going to tell them? <laughs> no. No, you, 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 why, why? Because you've experienced. See, that's part of that knowing. You go from the inception, you go through the process of learning, and then you go to the time where you absolutely attain it, and then it becomes a personal experience. And when we know Christ through that personal experience, and then we begin to know His Word and the truth of it from personal experience... How, do I, how am I so confident of Philippians 4.19? Because I've seen God supply my need over and over, over and over, over and over. Why am I so confident to know that I, one thing that I'll never stop doing is tithing and giving no matter what else happens? Why? Because I've seen it sustain me over and over and over. I've seen God hold to His truth and His provision. Why do, I, why do I fall and, and, and uh, when, when sin comes, why do I run to God instead of run away? Because of 1 John 1, 9 says I'm faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's the truth. No matter what it is, that His grace is sufficient for me. When I'm weak, He's strong. See, the truth of God's Word, when we let it rule and let it rule our mind and let let it rule our spirit, get us to salvation, get us born again, let it rule our mind so that when we run off into a place we shouldn't or we begin to doubt or we begin to be consumed, we can go back to the truth and let it rule. And we can let it rule our flesh to bring it under subjection and bring it into the right place. Man, I tell you what, it's 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 an amazing thing when we can let the truth rule let the Word of God rule. I got that confidence through the inception. I heard. I heard some preacher one time say that if you give, it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I, I heard that scripture, and I said, okay, I'll think about that. I'll go through a process. I'll, 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 I'll put that to work. I'll study that. I'll dig in a little deeper. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be, and then I, I began, and then I saw, I, it's mine. It began to be confident. And then I had personal experience. And then I could begin to share a testimony. Wow, we did this and God provided. We were at this point and yet God provided. Whatever it is. We were at a time where we didn't have enough emotional strength and all of a sudden strength showed up. We were at a time when we were totally dark and yet he said joy comes in the morning and God brought us into a place of joy again. All of these truths begin to reign because we learned and now we have a personal experience. Now I can do, I can read it to you from the scripture and I can tell you a story of how God did it in my life. When we get to that point, truth's ruling in our lives. The truth of God, amen? Well, as we close tonight, you know, the beginning point of all of that comes with surrendering our life to Jesus Christ. With no longer just saying, God, you know, I like you or God, I want to know you or God, but we say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. I assume everybody in here, but I never want to be caught assuming. I would assume that there might be somebody watching. could be somebody sitting right here. You've never really made that choice, that decision. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Because, Father, God, you come into this, you come to this place by virtue your word says, the truth of your word says, that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are, are in our midst. We have the almighty God in this place today.
El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. And Father, I pray that for any person in this place who's not certain of their relationship with you, they can't 100% say, if I died tonight, I'm going to heaven. There's a solution for that. The truth of God's Word says that if we believe in our heart that Jesus is the Christ, that God raised Him from the dead, and if we confess Him as Lord, that we're saved. End of story. We're born again. We're a child of God. That the sin that Jesus took on Himself was that the sin that was separating us from God. And when we accept Christ, it's gone. And Father, I thank You and I praise You that You 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 draw people to that truth tonight in Jesus' name. As everybody's heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm going to ask you, is there anybody, you guys can, can look at me, you can stay, you keep your head bowed, but if you need to pray a prayer, if you're not sure, raise your hand. You could have been going to this church a long time. You say, people think I'm great. I don't care what people think. I want to know what God thinks. I want it to be settled. Is there anybody that needs to pray? I didn't see any hands, so I'm assuming I'm looking around. All right, I think we're all right, but I don't want to assume. If you're watching, there's a way to contact us. But we can pray a very simple prayer that says, Jesus, I, I, I repent of my sin. And I invite you into my heart, heart and in my life. I ask you to become my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me yours. If we can pray that prayer with sincerity, the Bible says we're saved. There's another truth of God's word that says if we fall into sin that we can repent we can say Father forgive me I turn away I reject it and Lord I align myself with you I ask you to forgive me cleanse me and make me right again he promises he'll do that I thank you Father that you do that for us in Jesus name amen you know if there's ever any time of prayer you need there's a ways to get a hold of us there's cards business cards out there you can text uh, you can send messages. If I, you can't get a hold of me, you can get a hold of Whitney usually, and she'll get a hold of me. But, uh, man, I tell you what, are there are there prayer requests tonight? Did we get any written down? Any? Uh, I didn't get the, the list. I was going to pray over some of those. Um, I know that we want to keep uh, Blackie Blackburn in, in prayer and keep him lifted up. Terry Dietrich, is, all right, your, your wife passed in the last week or so. Uh, 10 days and she had been in, in poor health and so it was a, really a blessing in the sense of her release and, and but uh, keep Terry and his family in prayer as well uh, it was a blessed home going service and, and all but uh, but is there any anything else anybody else got anything big that needs to be prayed over Hi. oh goodness okay so Bob Prochaska, we'll pray over him. So, yeah. So let's pray. Father, we just come before you and lift up that list and those names that were named. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to be at work in, in the in and through those lives. And Father God, we praise you that you're at work in, in the different ones that, were, that are on that list, the different ones that are going in for care or surgery, and the ones that are, can't be here with us tonight. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with this nation. We continue to lift it up to you, ask you to minister in strength and in hope and in peace. And that, Father, you give wisdom. Bring the people into office that can keep us on track. And, Lord, we praise you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, we're going to let Jim come back up here. We're going to stay here and minister. Let him minister. And we're going to listen. I'm excited about having Jim back. I think he's a blessing uh, always to us. So let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> What a wonderful message. Wonderful message. Great. I uh, was li listening. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a little testimony. You know, I come slipping in here. I sing you a few songs, do some praises, and I leave. And... Uh, I think maybe this is the third or fourth time, and I'm beginning to get to know a few of you that I can recognize your face and say howdy to. But I thought maybe tonight I'd, I'm going to talk just a little bit about what you were talking about, trusting the Lord. And, and we're going to sing. I'm not going to preach. But we're gonna, 
I remember the, I just got married. Now I've been married 54 years, so that's a while. And uh, the little gal I married, she was a lot stronger in faith than I was. True story. And she went down to a church meeting, and when she got home, she said, well, I told them I'm gonna, we'd give them $5 a week to the church. Oh, man, did I have a fit. Where are you going to get the $5? You don't work. I'm the one that leaves, but you, you can hear the story. But we did. Yeah, you don't work. <laughs> Stayed with me. Well, you know, um, through that, I started to grow, started to grow. And the Lord has allowed me to grow, not me grow. I didn't grow it. The Lord has allowed me to grow. And I, get, I just want to give you an example, just an example. And you can say, oh, that is just pure, but it's, it's a truth. We helped start a little church about 35 years ago in Norman, and the desire of the six or eight couples was to build this big old sanctuary. Well, 35 years has gone by, and they're getting ready to build that sanctuary. Now, my wife and I left that church to go do other work. But when we left, we said, when they build that church, we're going to give to that building progress. And we put a number on it. We did. Well, we found out just recently they're going to build that church. And we had committed... And I looked, at my, I looked at my retirement portfolio and went, oh my gosh, it is worth, I mean, it is down. Wait till next year. My sweetie says, no, no, we, we committed to that. We committed to that. Uh, that was about a month ago. I've had more work in the last month than I have ever had in the cowboy music business. I'm not kidding you. I got another call today. And I thought, Lord, I, I don't think I can do this. And he says, sure you can. It's the Baptist Village. They're having a fish fry. They want to hear cowboy songs. I'm telling you, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And, and see what happens. Here's a, here's a Gene Autry song. I feel it kind of feeding back on me or something. On the trail when the storm is in the sky I never worry Cause I know God's in the saddle Right there by my side On the trail when the mountaintops are high no care will hurt me Cause I know God came along on the trail To be my guide With him by my side As a lifelong partner I'll keep jogging along Wearing a smile while the sun is shining Filling the night with a song On the trail as I ride along through life I never worry Cause I know God's in the saddle Right there by my side With him by my side As a lifelong partner I'll keep jogging along Wearing a smile While the sun is shining Filling the night with a song On the trail when the storm is in the sky I never worry Cause I know God's in the saddle Right there by my side Yes, I know God's in the saddle right there 
by my side. Yeah, God's in the saddle. Thank you. Thank you. This is a uh, this is a hymn prayer, and uh, maybe we'll close with this. I could sing for three more hours, but let's close with this. God bless America, this land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet I'm going to give you a challenge before we pray out of here. I want you to, the rest of this week, sing that song and sincerely ask the Lord to put his hand of blessing on this country. I appreciate that. I, you know, this is flag day and... Uh, I actually heard Johnny Cash's uh, old, this old flag right on our way in here this this evening. I wish I uh, could have got it lined up. We'd have done that. But uh, Kevin, pray us out of here, would you, sir? Lord, um, thank you for this cowboy church. And as uh, as Jim said, uh, let's let's all pray for this country. Yes. It sure needs us. It's in a world of hurt. Uh, we know you can take care of it, and you will. There's no doubt. Thank you for the harvest weather the harvesters are having. Yes. Um, and just appreciate all you do for us. Be with everybody as they go home to get home safely. Amen. Amen. We're going to tear down tonight, uh, and uh, we will, if.